Hello, Western Oregon sports fans, and welcome to Wolves Weekly Recap Edition. Here today with head football coach Arnt Ferguson, who just led the Wolves to a 34-10 win against Simon Fraser at home. Mm -hmm. How is it going today? Oh, uh, real good. Uh, Simon Fraser is a new coming in. Their own D-line and uh, linebackers would be tough and physical, so we knew it would be a, a tough fought battle. And we're just uh, real glad that you know our defense got turnovers uh, late in the game. Um, then also um, Trevor Gates showing up again. Um, I believe it's his 400 yard reception, really opening things up, those two skill positions. Well, we'll talk through this game really quick, but mm -hmm. first note I want to say, great to be back at home. Mm -hmm. Had some good atmosphere out there in the stands. Nice mm -hmm. to have the little tailgate going and everything yeah. else like that as well. Yeah, it, it's amazing that it's uh, kind of late in the season and it's our second home game. Um, it feels like it's obviously fall, but our field started to slip in a little bit more than we'd like at this time. And uh, defensively, we had to contain those running backs who've been averaging over 100 yards plus um, and did a really nice job of that, which kept us um, in control of the game. Um, and we just kept on having to give the ball back to our offense to uh, sooner or later we knew that their skill positions would start taking over things. Well, the, as I mentioned right there, the final score was 34 to 10, but you're not able to really see that coming at halftime when Simon Frazier was actually leading you guys 7-6, they hit oh, yeah. one big play, and their yeah. defense was really getting after your quarterback. Yeah, they had five sacks overall. Um, they were able to, to move some D-linemen around, but they're also good players. We expected that coming in. Um, the touchdown that they got on defense, miscommunication uh, with a, a safety and uh, also Bryce Pila. Um, so definitely got that fixed, and which helped out in the second half. Well, if you want to say that about Pila, maybe there was that one hiccup there on defense, mm -hmm. but overall, Western Oregon's defense played really well. Mm -hmm. You guys had four takeaways in the game. Mm -hmm. Really, four that got right back and really gave your offense a chance to score on them, too. They, yeah. they, talk to me a little bit about some of these ones, especially Bryce Pila. Uh, Three takeaways in the fourth quarter, GNAC well, Player of the Week. Yeah, first of all, Bryce Pila um, is a special player. Um, he has a great nose for the football. Um, he's always around it. Um, First of all, he got a fumble recovery, returned that 30 yards, and our offense scored on that, I believe. And then he had two picks. Um, then also had a punt return. So he had his overall total yardage or something like 150 as a safety and catching one punt. That's a pretty good deal. Very yeah. good. Yeah. And that was noted uh, by the by the GNAC SID as well, mm -hmm. that Bryce Pila is right there within the GNAC single season record for return yardage. Mm -hmm. Seems like, as you mentioned, he doesn't just intercept the ball, he really seems to do something with it. And that defense, mm -hmm. the other defensive players on that team really seem to give him a chance and they can smell the end zone as much as he can. Uh, it's something we work on. Uh, we still need to work on more. But Bryce Pila uh, is a very good athlete and he uses those blocks well. Well, let's shift over to the Western Oregon offense right there, mm -hmm. who had some nice positive things to take out of the game as well. You guys, you talked about returning, Pila getting some returns. You also had Robert Young who mm -hmm. got a fumble recovery yeah. and actually set up that very first touchdown of the game. Yeah. And that two of those touchdowns came from Kenneth Haynes mm -hmm. who really seemed to be finding those little narrow gaps right there in the red zone and finding the end zone as well. Um, first of all, Kenny does a nice job of finding the creases inside. Um, we're still getting better. Uh, we're feeling like we're not hitting as many as we'd like. Um, but he will get there um, and uh, he keeps on getting better and better um, as the game progresses and his quickness of getting in the end zone uh, really still surprises me how fast he can get the end zone and run the balls on a three or four or five. All of a sudden you turn around and he's just in there and uh, no one touches him. So. Well we want to make sure whenever you talk about a running back uh, we'll just hit on this really quickly but we know it's the offensive line that gives him a chance and it helps open up those oh, yeah. holes right there. Yeah, and the O-line's getting better. Um, they uh, had their work cut out for them, but really wore down Simon Fraser's D-line, and that's what you really saw in the second half. Well, talk to me, too. You mentioned it. Trevor Gates seems to be that safety blanket out there for you guys, but he's making not just the third down catches, but he's making the big plays as well. Yeah, Trevor Gates, um, any time a receiver has um, 100 yards plus in four games in a row, um, they're doing things uh, well. I mean... He uh, having nine catches, so he's catching a short ball. He's catching a third down. He's catching a deep ball. I mean, when you put those all together, um, Trevor Gates is having a, a great year, and uh, he shows up every Saturday and plays his butt off, and, and he's always making plays. There are certain players that do that, and, and he's really um, done that at a high level for quite some time now. And we actually had an opportunity after the game to interview Trevor Gates. We'd like to show that clip now from our 
studio, Deborah Rizal got this clip. Our game plan today was to establish the run, come out, try to be more physical. We knew they were a very physical team and we had to come ready to play. And so we started off a little slow, but we definitely picked it up in the second half and got back to our game plan. Our touchdown play was a double move, and uh, we, we just we got man coverage. They, they were manned up on us a lot of game. Quarterback made a great throw. Our O-line held them, and we just connected in the end zone. My offensive line, they they just they the best. I guess they the best offensive line out here in the conference. You know, I have no doubt in my line that they're going to make the make that play, and so I just trust it. And as soon as I get in there, I'm a t it's a touchdown. So, you know, I think I thank my offensive line before I thank myself and God. Well, just want to say, you know, great to get the guys on the oh, yeah. on the the show really quickly. Mm -hmm. But um, Arn, we're gonna have a chance to talk to you a little later in the week when. One of the more anticipated games of the entire year, Humble yeah. State at home. So just want to say thank you for joining me in the studio today, and thank you all for watching this edition of Wolves Weekly. Right, we, game ball. We, Metaphorical game ball. Here we go. Game ball. Bryce Peel. Hey, 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 hey. Should have had two, but. Hold it. Nice job. Hold his game. Hold the dude. Hold the dude. This is the start of the GNSI, baby. Yeah. Let's go. Here we go. Wolf back on three, one, two, three. Hold the dude. 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 H